car. Welcome back to the Imaginary Gallery. It is TJ, your host. The topic of the evening is a question. Can you have an emotional connection with a cluster B creature? Hold on for the answer, or maybe decide for yourself. What inspires this particular discussion comes from a time a few years ago in my own past, when I had basically been discarded after over a decade of fakery, of which became apparent later. And of course, at the end, I could look back at all those things I questioned and realize that I was onto something, but I was gaslighted away from that something. But after such an experience, I decided that maybe it would be nice just to be free not have to worry about answering to someone or having someone monitor my every move even though the moves they're doing are far worse and i figured well this will be a nice time just to be free no expectations no requirements well i came across a particular cluster b creature who happened to have a history of multiple dates online applications had been invented so this person utilized such technology that resulted in hyper-dating throughout the week. Seven different people for seven different days. And this particular person had a family history of, let's just say, a mother who happened to have several children, but they were all authored by different sires. Now, the lady eventually must have gotten her act together, and she settled on one. But it doesn't excuse the fact that her family was full of children who all had different fathers. Which kind of goes along with its behavior. Like, if you're looking from the outside in, and you see a mother who would be considered a role model, and then a child who's there seeing all these different fathers coming and going, that would create an influence. After all, when you're a child, all you have to go on is your experience. Like it or not, this particular person with this situation evidently saw me as the wounded bird or smelled the blood from the previous creature and was honing in. Whereas I was being honest saying, you know what? I just got out of the most horrible thing and the last thing I want to do is get back into any kind of horrible thing. I cherish the value of independence, of not being attached to another person, because Lord knows during that previous attachment I had questions all the way through that were conveniently gaslighted away, so even though I was probably onto something, I'd be told, oh, that's silly, that's wrong. So I decided it's time to be free, and of course, didn't want to be like the creature, so I would up front say, hey, if you want to hang out, great. But don't be expecting any romance or love because I'm not interested in that crap. After what I just went through, I just want to be free. Well, this creature had different intentions in mind. And this creature, with the history I just mentioned, had already been chasing after several others right up until before the point I actually met it. And yet, we spent a few weeks hanging out, doing stuff because I thought it was safe. Because remember... I was up front and honest and said, look, I'm not interested in that romance crap, but if you want to hang out and have fun, great. And the other person was like, oh, I don't want that either, which is classic mirroring. I don't want relationship either. I felt safe and comfortable, and that allowed the meetings to continue. A few weeks later, I was given the ridiculous blow to the senses, being told by this creature, I can't help it, but I've fallen in love with you. I know I said I didn't want romance, but I can't help it. And I thought, well, honey, that's your problem. <laughs> because I can help it. I know what I'm saying. However, foolishly, I ignored these obvious red flags and continued going on my original take of I've said what I felt. I've stated where I'm at. If this person wants to hang around, knowing that, great. But of course, the story was changing, and I already knew about the history just mentioned up to this point. Got 
bits and pieces about the family history, plus another instance where a relative used to take this creature along with it while it cheated on its husband-to-be, which again is forming an impression in this person's mind. And I was so over the relationship prep after all the stuff I'd seen and been through, I would openly say things like, you know what, two people aren't meant to be together. All they do is lie and pretend and do this and do that, which is basically recapping this person's prior experience. However, this creature was a predator and was saying, oh, well, I don't think that way. I don't believe that. I believe in true love. And again, you're looking at the history you know, and then you're hearing these words, and you're thinking, okay, it is possible to be a loose whore who gets around and has fun doing it to a person who is not a loose whore. However, in order to go from one extreme to the other, something has to change. That, my dear, is where the cracks showed, because I already knew what I knew, and then here, after just a few short weeks, was being told, oh, I believe one person and another person should be together forever, and la la la, even though that scenario is nothing resembling its prior experience, including its growing up experience and role modeling experience. So my thoughts were, well, what happened? What changed? Right before I met you, you were chasing six different people, and now you're wanting marriage? Even after I discussed how sickening my 11 years turned out to be at the end, you acted like you understood, and now you're just saying, oh, I want to be in a relationship forever? It didn't add up, because a realistic person would know that, yes, it's possible to go from one extreme to another, but when questioned, I'd be like, well, what changed? You get superficial answers like, oh, well, I just decided that one day I wanted to do this instead of that, and honey, I'm not buying that. That is fake, cheap, and retarded. However, because of the foundation I developed thinking it mattered, I continued to see the creature and it just became kind of like a battle where I'd say, two people aren't meant to be together. Look at this example that these people are doing. Da, 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 da. And it didn't matter what example I shared. It was always, well, whatever, that's not the way it is for me. Even though there's no qualification or graduation evident going from the horror lifestyle to the wanting to be domesticated one-on-one -on -one lifestyle, there's nothing at all. Plus, all the factors from the past work against it, so I was skeptical for good reason. And then down the road, foolishly, I continued, and I would notice particular instances where we'd be around other people, whatever the conversation was, I would hear this creature make certain claims or statements around others or to others and when the conversation or interaction was over I'd be thinking about what I just heard versus what I knew from my time with the creature I'd say what were you talking about when you had said whatever you said to that person and this happened a few times because it was weird to be with someone so much and then hear them in a social setting saying things that sound like they're coming out of somebody else well, the response I got was, I don't know how to put my emotions into words. So, if I hear other people saying things and they sound good, well then, I'll use those words and say the same thing. Well, what does that indicate, my dears? I'd say it indicates fake. Back on to the story, the creature continued to push all this love stuff and two people forever and stuff that was completely repellent to my current situation. And I would constantly question it, like, well, you're used to having seven different dates in a seven-day period. What could possibly be appealing to you about you and one other person only for the rest of your life? Now, come on. And the answers I would get would be, again, superficial, shallow fakery. Well, I just decided that I didn't want to be like that anymore. Ha! Ah, really? Sorry, but not buying that either. Again, it's a new person. That's what they're saying. That's all you have to go on. So you're left to your own devices to think about such things because if you try to bring it up and say, but wait a second, just last week you were doing this and now you don't want to do that? Ah, the point is they're missing the progress that would go from point A to point Z. It's just, oh, well, yesterday I was a hooker and a whore, but oh, today I don't want to be. And you think, uh, how did you go from there to there? And you don't get anything that sounds legitimate, just something superficial. Oh, well, I just decided and think, hmm, okay. If you're a real person, you know that that's just not the way things work. 
if you do go from point A to point Z, well, there should be a really enthralling story depth that explains how one went from one point to the other, but it's just not there with this type of person. With all that behind us, I would question that same thing again of like, what's appealing at all about being with just one person the rest of your life? Because first off, I wasn't interested in that. Second off, I didn't think this person even had a clue what it was talking about. I was just trying to ask, well, what's the deal here? Why would you do this and then want to do that? One of the answers I got with this question, why would you want to go from a hooker whore lifestyle to a one-on-one -on -one forever lifestyle and the answer I got was I want an emotional connection now if this was a comedy television show there'd be a laugh track that would be laughing right now because let's revisit this person has already stated that they're emotionally retarded to contrast if you're a real person who really feels how you feel you're in touch with that and you can express that Bingo! Great! You're in touch with your emotions. But this other creature has already admitted that it doesn't have any connection with its own emotions. It simply carrots off other people's statements that it probably collects from movies, other past targets from other people, but none of it's genuine. What? the main ingredient for an emotional connection. My dears, I'd think that you'd have to be a little bit in touch with your own emotions. So here you've got this creature who's got this background of no commitments anywhere, claiming it wants to marry you after just a few short weeks, also admitting that it doesn't know how to put what it feels into words, so it copies the words of others. You know what? That is a recipe for disaster. So in answer to the question, can you have an emotional connection with a cluster B creature? The answer is a definite no! How can you emotionally connect to a person who is simply mimicking other people's statements that describe their emotions, which have nothing to do with the creature who heard them and liked them? It's not a possibility. But it's sickening to see these people in their twisted realities making such bold statements as, I want to marry you and be with you forever. And when questioned about their past up to this point, is, oh, well, that's the past. That doesn't matter. I've decided yesterday that I want to be with you forever. It also makes me think of that movie called Monster, which had Charlize Theron and Christina Ricci. There is a scene where the hooker, I'm a hooker, <laughs> Now she waltzed on into that office and said, You know, I want to be a veterinarian. As if you can just go from a murdering hooker killer to, oh, a veterinarian. Well, that's what these creatures appear like when they claim to want this emotional connection thing, when they're not even connected to their own emotions. And the guy in the office where Charlize, Eileen, went in saying she wants the veterinarian job, the man had to break it to her gently, or not so gently, and say, look, a veterinarian's a medical doctor, bison. You can't just walk in off the beach and decide to be a veterinarian. It also became apparent, too, throughout the time with this creature, that there would be various secret situations that were completely non-compatible with the I am happy with you and you only and you forever. My thoughts, again, are against it, thinking that's not what you've ever had before. It's not what you were raised with. Uh, okay. It turned out that after a while I uncovered and it finally admitted that during many of those times, it was guilty of the same type of crap. And its response was were, Well, you didn't need to know that I was doing this because you hadn't done what I wanted you to do. And I think, okay, that's not good. Because you're sitting there trying to convince me that I should throw away my ideas based on my 11-year disaster and just throw myself into your arms because you are ready for this and for that, yet your past is more fucked up than mine. I don't think so. You can't have an emotional connection with a person that's a cluster B creature because chances are they're not in touch with their own emotions. They are copying other people's statements describing their emotions. And if you look closely, you'll notice a lot of inconsistency because it's almost like they're picking at random different viewpoints that if you're a real person, you would know that one person wouldn't say this line about their emotions and then also at the same time say that line about their emotions because it's like two different personalities, emotions presented in one person's body and they're just not compatible. It's like they chose at random without knowing what they're doing like a robot, a human emotion someone expressed, but not realizing that human emotions 
from a real person would be consistent, and they've chosen completely inconsistent emotional responses. So what I've determined with my experience, not just with this one, but a few others, they claim to want this emotional connection, but just like with their relationships, as far as being open, they're open on their end. So it's a half-open relationship. Well, in this case, it's they want an emotional connection with somebody who is emotionally connectable, but they want to continue their fictitious facade, and they want to get away with it, not understanding, of course, what it requires to have such a thing. So it's an illusion. They want to maintain an illusion of having an emotional connection with another person, mainly by mirroring the other person and parroting other people's lines. But to the genuine human being, we can usually see through all that, thinking, you know what, you're trying too hard to be human. You're obviously not. But for your sake, if you think they're cute or they're great in the bedroom, you can work it out, think again, because they're doing that stuff in the bedroom with several others at the same time, leading them on too in case you don't work out. You can't really emotionally connect with the person who's not emotionally connectable. And that's what the cluster B creature is. They're a mask wearing creature who's pretending to be what they think you want, but there is nothing below the surface. The key point to remember here is we're talking about a relationship. Key part of the word relationship is relate. Well, you can't really relate to a person who's not being genuine about what they feel or where they're coming from. So it's a disordered situation. We, of course, may think that we can make it better because we attribute our own personality traits to others, but in this case, it does not apply. You cannot create any kind of emotional connection to a fraud. It comes down to the same principle as the Cluster B creatures' views on monogamy or commitments. They love commitments, but the commitments they love are one-sided. It means you are committed to them. They're not committed to you. They don't even know how to do such a thing, but they pretend. They're actors, and not very good in many cases. I've got somebody right here. Oh, hey, here's a baby. Well, look at you. Mr. Hero wants to go for a walk. <laughs> Hero, he's going to get one soon. But yes, you cannot form any kind of lasting anything with these creatures because they're fake. They are phony. They want all the benefits of an emotional connection and a long relationship, but they can't relate and they can't connect. So if you're involved with one, the best thing to do is to get away. And I always say no explanation needed because if you provide an explanation, you will be yanked into a labyrinth rabbit hole of sickness where they'll try to prove to you with gaslighting how wrong you are and how you should look back to those love bombing things they did and not dare be so harsh based on this one little thing. Well, honey, this one little thing is a deal breaker. Isn't it, hero? Isn't it? <laughs> so if you've got one in your life and you've noticed these inconsistencies where the actions don't match the words, their history has no indication of any kind of stability, yet they're wanting a little house on the prairie relationship with you just because they decided a few days ago that's what they want. Beware and push it away if possible, because it only gets worse. In case you didn't know, I am the narcopath, and you ain't. But don't even try. I don't know if you remember our first date, but I made it a point to tell you that I didn't sleep around that I was a one-man type of chick. And, of course, through the afternoon at the beach, at least ten guys came up and were pinching my bottom and telling me I looked sexy and hot, and then you kept asking who they all were. Well, I used my standard lines. Oh, that's just a friend. Oh, I grew up with him. Oh, he always calls me Pussy Willow. Oh, he always squeezes my bottom. Get over it. And you kept talking about it because you thought you saw something in his eyes that indicated he and I had been together. And that is ridiculous, I told you. Drop it. Would you just drop it? 
Oh, I'm getting sick of this. I'm here with you. You did not need to know that he and I were together basically every night that you were busy. You did not need to know any of that. And if you would have minded your own business, we would have been fine. I don't know what it is with all you people thinking you have to find out the truth. It's none of your business. As long as you understand that, we can be together forever. Just make sure you don't follow me. Hello, darling. I am the narcopath. I know that when we were together, I always caught you looking at those young, beautiful bimbos who had the pretty faces. And I always felt second fiddle to them. You would always tell me I was the most beautiful one. But I knew that you really liked them better. So I've taken steps to give you a birthday surprise. I have changed my appearance for you. I'm gonna unveil it for you now. And once you see my new look, post plastic surgery, you will be with me forever. Hi, sweetie. Do you wanna make love? You always told me I was the prettiest. Come on now. Ah. <sighs>